Some little bug is going to find you someday. Some little bug will crawl upon you someday. Then he'll send for his bug friends and all your troubles will begin. Some little bug is going to find you someday. Learning to do knit checks in a systematic way can ease a lot of anxiety for families. Try not to spend more than an hour or an hour and a half on each Bing. head. And remember, when you're doing a head check, you're looking for the eggs, which are called knits. You're not looking for live lice. Lice are fast moving and they hide. But don't worry about it, because you'll be getting the live lice with the olive oil. If you have trouble seeing the knits, Try the vision visor. It magnifies two and a half times at a distance of eight inches, which is ideal for nitpicking. And us guys are always more willing to help if you let us use a tool. And here's professional nitpicker, Mary Ward. First thing I do is part it down the middle, and then I take very thin sections. If it's too thick, I divide it with my finger one more time. And I'm gonna look on both sides of the hair and I'm looking for a little knit that will come like a teardrop that comes away from the scalp. The other thing that's important is if a knit is right there, I can't rub it off, I can't push it off with one finger, I, I have to literally take the whole knit and take it off the entire piece of hair. Say I only took it off part way, if I push my finger again it wouldn't move, it wouldn't flick off. I have to take it with two fingers over the entire piece of hair. A knit could look light, they could look brown, they could look gray. So I'm not really concerned about looking for color, I'm looking for shape. If you want cooperation, I do not recommend TV. If they have TV, they lift their head, they're looking, you're pushing their head down, they're lifting their head, and it's a constant battle instead of using your time to systematically go through the head. I take another section, and again, if it's too thick, just slide your finger through there one more time. Mainly I want to look for things here, but after you've combed they can be pushed further down the hair and I want to get it off. Okay, so I'm looking on both sides, all over, and if I found one, like right here, I actually drop this back over here and I take that little section and isolate it and I take my fingernails and I pull it and I have to pull it clear off the entire piece of hair. If I took it this way and stopped here, the knit would still be stuck here. So I have to take it all the way off. And once I remove it, I usually just put it on a piece of paper towel. What I'm also looking for is uh, little bites on the scalp, because that gives me a better idea of whether something's healing or getting worse. And I go around this whole side of the head like that. And when I get to this part, I want you to turn your head just a little bit and move your kid's head any way you need to move it. I'm doing the same thing by the time I get to this part, but I might make s smaller sections just because the hair is going to be cut differently mm. when you get up here. And I keep what I haven't done on this side and what I have done over here. You can use a clip if, you, if that's easier for you. So I'd go around until I got to this part. So I'm looking at these tiny, tiny bits of hair. And once I get all the way up to the top here, I start back at the beginning again. But this time, instead of having a, a part directly down the middle like I did before, so like there, I actually go over quite a bit, like maybe an inch or something. So I'm overlapping. So now when I'm doing it, I'm gonna go through here like this. Remember, if it's too thick, make it smaller with your fingers. Look on both sides. And then I'm placing the hair this direction. I actually even feel it too with my fingers a little bit. You could feel a uh, knit. And 
And again, remember back here by the ear, you don't want to miss any of these little pieces of hair here. And remember, most hair is cut differently up by the ear, so you take smaller sections instead of long sections. After I've spent about an hour covering the whole hair systematically, if I've found knits, I've pulled them off, I've put them on a piece of paper. What I do is I have them look straight up, and I kind of do it a little bit differently. I, I'm going to look again around the whole hairline, and I'm looking for little tiny ones that I want to pull off, because they come kind of get us lost when you're doing the, um, the other systematic head check. Looking all down here, so if I find any, I'm taking it off, okay? I also kind of just randomly go through now. And I usually try to concentrate where I found the most knits. So say I found the most knits right here. I might start over here and just kind of randomly pick up pieces. And I might find something and I'll take it off. So you've already done the hour, hour and a half of systematic. Now you're kind of doing random because you can catch things that you missed the first time doing that. And don't spend an hour and a half doing this part. This should be like maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 if you're finding a lot. The little ones, like four-year-olds or something like that, love goofy talk and you get a lot of cooperation with them. They just like you touching their head and talking to them. And also, you know, you can bribe them. I think it's okay to bribe, say, once we're done, we're gonna go do whatever that kid likes the best. Make your knit check a positive experience because children will follow your lead. So the more relaxed you are, the more tolerant they'll be when it comes to having their head checked. Some little bug is going to find you someday. Some little bug will crawl upon you someday. Then he'll send for his bug friends and all your troubles will begin. Some little bug is going to find you someday. Da -da 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 -da